Hi guys, so we're here to discuss with you today the three biggest mistakes that I'm willing to bet you'll make as a brand new gardener. And this is not coming from an expert, this is coming from a couple brand new gardeners. Uh, and these are definitely the three biggest mistakes that we made the first year uh, with our big vegetable gardens. Mistake number one was not paying enough attention to our soil. That sounds super simple and of course soil is important and everybody knows that, but we didn't realize just how important it was. We're gonna show you this in our lower garden bed today, which is the first garden bed that we planted last year. Uh, and it's one that we've had the longest and it's the one that probably did the worst. We'll show you our middle garden bed later where we go into mistake number two. And that one probably grew plants about twice as fast of the same variety that grew down here just by having better soil. So in our lower garden, before we planted it, we did add a small bit of compost in, but it was such a big space and we didn't have enough. And looking back on this soil now, we can definitely see the difference and definitely understand why some of our plants didn't grow as well that we hoped they would. Looking at the soil here, once you kind of dig it up, you can see that it's kind of got a bit of a clay base to it. Uh, it doesn't look very nutrient rich and it's not horrible soil, but as soon as you pour some of our soil from our mid garden next to it, you can really see the difference in the nutrient value that's in that soil. Actually physically bringing down that soil and comparing them side by side has really shown us why our mid garden grew so much faster and so much healthier than our lower garden did. So the biggest tip we can give you is definitely pay a lot of attention to your soil, study your plants, find out what nutrients they need, make sure you have a compost rich soil and that there's lots of nutrients in there that are gonna balance out for what your plants need. All right, now we've gone through the first biggest mistake. We're gonna take you up to our mid garden and show you what's number two. Okay, so we are now up at our mid-level garden. Um, and as you can kind of see behind me, this garden's doing really well. Um, everything's nice and green, they've grown really quick. We actually only put this garden in halfway through the summer. Um, the lower one we put in right at the beginning, so this has grown even better than our lower garden in half the time, and that's because of the quality of soil that we've used. That brings us to mistake number two, which is planting things too closely and not spacing them appropriately for what you need. This is always really, really tempting to do. It was especially tempting for us this year when we're trying to grow as much food as possible and you want to get the most out of the space that you have. That being said, this usually backfires and you end up with smaller plants and not getting as much out of it as if you'd space them properly. So we're going to have a look at our mid garden here and we'll show you exactly what we're talking about. So the first example is our celery. We planted these in small trays in the spring and then planted them out into this mid garden about halfway through. And you can see that we've got a bunch of different stalks that are all kind of growing right next to each other. So to make sure we had enough, we planted three or four seeds in each one and each one is kind of developing into its own stalk. So what we're gonna do is kind of pick out the outside ones and we'll just leave the middle ones and show you. Try not to damage the other ones there. How much better the single stalks grow when they're not surrounded with all these other ones. Okay, we may have planted more than just four seeds. And that's also a separate one. Just gonna pack this soil back in here. Make sure that's got a nice strong root system. And what we'll do is we'll come back in about a month and we'll do a follow-up video and we'll show you the difference from this stock that now has enough room compared to all these other ones we've grown over here that are still bunched up and growing together. We're gonna give you one more example of this in our mid garden before we move on to mistake number three. We also did the same thing with our beets that we did with the celery and we were overzealous and thought we we're going to get as many as we can out of this and we're going to show you why that backfired. You can see from our beets here at the front that they're all doing really well. The leaves are coming in nicely. We'll use these in our salads and we'll still get some good use out of them. But from the bottoms, they're all way too congested down below. And what happens when that gets too close together is that you're not really going to get any significant beets. So you can see from these beets that were planted too close together, you're gonna to get a lot of these kind of little straggly ones that aren't really gonna develop into anything. We've got one that was the biggest one of the group that kind of did okay, but that's still some pretty bad development. So it's really important when you're planting to space things out for the amount of space they need. If you do end up planting them too close together, just make sure you thin them out nice and early to make sure they have the room that they need. You can see here on one beet that has had enough space, you can see there isn't as many growing right around it and it's properly spaced out. Just the difference in size of the beet that you'll get there. 
So still not the biggest beet. These guys are still pretty early because they're planted mid-summer, but that's quite a difference in the size of the beet and that's really what you want. This was the one that was properly spaced and had the right room to grow. It developed a nice little tuber on there, whereas these ones are super small. They'll probably be hard to use. We can use the greens and things, but we won't get much use out of those beets. So uh, you really wanna make sure that you're spacing them appropriately and you'll end up with a much better harvest. Okay, so that was big mistake number two. We're gonna head up to our upper forest garden and take you on to the last mistake, mistake number three. Mistake number three, which is planting things all at once. That may sound like a bit of a funny one and probably not that many people will agree, but we found that to be a big mistake for us this year. We found that this spring we were so excited we planted as much as we could and got into the ground as fast as we can. Which started off great and it seemed like everything was going well until things started to be ready to harvest. At that point we had way too many vegetables, way too many cucumbers and there was no way we were going to be able to harvest and eat them all in the time that we wanted. A good example of that was our cucumber plants that we planted this year. We planted 10 cucumber plants all at the same time and they were all producing well and we were probably getting about 20 cucumbers a week and there was no way that we were going to eat all of them. Of course there's things you can do like turn them into pickles and make different things with them so of course that's a possibility but when all of our other vegetables were all being ready at the same time we just didn't have time to do it. For us how we've corrected this problem is with our potatoes. Potatoes are grown in mound lines here and as you can see we've got four different rows all kind of at different stages of growth. This is our last row of our spring planting of potatoes so um, they're starting to die off. These plants are pretty much dead. We've got some that are straggling here. Um, so these potatoes that are under this mound now are ready to be harvested. So we're going to go ahead and harvest those and then we'll show you the next rows that are kind of in a different succession. Okay, so we got a decent little harvest there from uh, one of our four rows of potatoes we have in our upper garden. We're also growing them in bags around the property as well, so we kind of do have that succession going on uh, all over the property, but uh, that'll last us a few weeks from this row before we move on to uh, one of our buckets, one of our bags, and then probably back up to the other rows here. So you can see in these other two rows, this middle one here was the first one that we actually harvested because that was doing the best. And as soon as we harvested those, then we replanted more potatoes to keep that cycle going. The row here will then be the one that we harvested next after that. And the far row we've just replanted again. Nothing sprouted yet, but those will be coming up soon. So it kind of shows you that idea of succession planting so that you can harvest what you need when you need it. Okay, so the three biggest mistakes for a quick recap. One is your soil. It is the least glamorous part of gardening, but it's the most important. Make sure you put time into making sure you have good soil. Number two, don't plant your things too close together. I know it's tempting, it's still tempting for us even though we know it's wrong. Space your plants out appropriately and you'll get a much better harvest. Number three, spread out your times when you're planting things. Make sure that you spread it out so you're not harvesting everything all at the same time and you can harvest what you want when you need it. That's it for this week's video. We hope you found it useful and you don't make the same mistakes that we did. Please help us out, hit subscribe below and check out some other videos of our one year challenge to only eat what we catch, grow, harvest or raise.